Hey everyone, welcome back to the podcast. It's that time of year where we discuss with each other and and so doing with you whether or not our kids are going to be awkward, weird, socially inept homeschool kids. <laughs> <laughs> We're just looking into the future right now. Uh, folks, we, we like talking about stuff like this. This is a concern or maybe a question that we get numerous times, I'd say almost weekly, like we get multiple questions around this topic on a weekly basis. I know we've covered it before, but our kids have gotten older since the last time we talked about it. Maybe we have some new thoughts since the last time we talked about this. And so we're going to talk about raising socially awkward kids now, <laughs> about what we're doing to hopefully not have socially awkward kids when they get older. If you enjoy this podcast, would you please be so kind us leave us a rating or a review on whichever platform you're listening to us on. And if you are watching us on YouTube, if you could hit the like button or subscribe, any of those things really help our podcast grow and reach more people. And I tell you what, Katie and I are getting more and more fired up about being parents, about being Christian parents. What a privilege it is to not only be the sons and daughter of Christ our King, you know, of God the Father, to be blood bought by him, but then to be blessed with this opportunity to bring up children in the nurture admonition of the Lord. I really am seeing this position as more and more of an honor and of a privilege and of a true duty, and uh, or I should say, I, I see the duty in it, and it gets us fired up. And so we want as many people uh, as possible to join us on this journey of parenting children in the Lord, bringing them up in the nurture and admonition of the Lord, raising the ne- next generation of Christians. And so, yeah, share this podcast with anybody that you think would be encouraged in that endeavor uh, through this podcast, and so on. Let's get this thing rolling. But now that we're a family podcast. First, a word from our sponsors over at Good Ranchers. It's time to put some prep in your step with Good Ranchers. New year, new meat special. Delicious, safe, and convenient meal prep is just one box away. 2024 is your year to ditch the mystery of the meat aisle and get American American meat delivered instead. I messed up. Should I start over? No, I'll keep going. I think you should keep going. Subscribe to any box and they'll add over two pounds of pre-trimmed, better than organic chicken breasts to your order for free. Not once, not twice, but every order for a year. That's only if you order in January, though. Yes. Let me tell you, Good Rancher's Chicken will change what you know about chicken. It's pasture-raised, given zero antibiotics, biotics, biotics, or vaccines, and is so tender and juicy, you won't believe it's the same meat you've been eating most of your life. Well, We can attest to that. Yes. Am I going to read this, or are you going to keep interjecting here? (laughs) I mean, I guess that's both is what's happening right now. Uh, Let's see. Simply go to GoodRanchers.com, pick your box, use... Our code, which is Votberg, our last name, and enjoy $189 worth of free chicken in 2024, plus $20 off your first order. Stock your fridge with easy to prepare, clean, delicious meat all year long. Not sure which box to choose? Try their brand new weekly essentials box full of pre trimmed beef and chicken that helps you meal prep so you can save time without sacrificing flavor. That's something that I really appreciate. I mean, we've said this time and time again. You know, I'm going to keep reading. Sorry. I'm not good at following the, the script. script. I'm not good at this. <laughs> if you, know, you haven't funny. noticed, we don't script this podcast. It's funny. I went uh, one time when we were doing a family Christmas concert, and I think it was um, it was a town in Oregon, and they had a local radio station, and they asked us to come in the, day, the morning of. The show was that night, and we were going to come in, and I was going to read a script for promoting the concert that night. And uh, they had it all, you know, written out. And I kept going off the script, and it really became a problem because were they upset with it, or did yeah, they, they like were, your ad libs? No, they didn't. Oh, they kept pausing. They go just read the. They, they you just started by saying, "Just read the script. Just read the script." And then I would like change some words, and they go, "You really just need to read the script. This is timed perfectly for whatever like the seventy-five second oh, spot it was supposed to be." Elisha. Um, yeah, it's kind of funny. That just reminded me of that instance. If you want to start your year off right, then change the way you buy meat by switching to Good Ranchers. Make sure to subscribe today and use my code, VOTEBERG, to claim over... Did I read this part already? (laughs) No. You mentioned the code twice. Okay. Good Ranchers, American meat delivered. The end. (laughs) Okay, no. I'm going to have to get used to this whole... uh, 
I mean, I'm grateful to have a sponsor of the podcast. It's pretty cool. Yeah, it's awesome. And you've you've worked with sponsors more than I have because back when you had your YouTube channel, yeah. now that I'm a mother, you had quite a few sponsors, but I've I've never done this, so that's why that felt very new to me. Well, hopefully, Good Ranchers is not new to you for much longer, to our listeners for much longer, I should say. Today, we're diving into an episode on... I don't know. I mean, it was Elisha's idea, mm-hmm. so I'll let you kick it off. Sure. I well, say. I don't know where I'm going with this. Yeah, like I mentioned in the introduction, this is a, I guess, a concern that comes up on a regular basis when people are either homeschooling their children, or they're considering homeschooling, or they just have critiques and criticism of homeschooling, and that is, well, man, I don't want these socially awkward kids, or what What do you do to ensure that your kids aren't going to be, you know, weird and, and homeschool-y? And it's funny whenever people come and share this complaint with us, or this concern, I should say, with us, because, you know, Katie and I grew up homeschooled, and so I'm always like, I, I like, are, are you concerned that they're going to be like us? I don't know. What are we worried about here, you know? <laughs> uh, and, and they always assure us, like, no, 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 we don't think you're weird or awkward, you know, so they say, uh, but this is a common, I would say, thought or concern. It's still a top three concern. Is that I right? I feel like. Top three. Okay, well, there you go. I didn't realize it was that high, but it's a top three concern officially. Oh, yeah. Uh, and so I thought we would discuss kind of our thoughts around that or if we have any concerns around that and maybe anything we're doing proactively to hopefully avoid that and remedy that potential pitfall in homeschooling. And is it a real thing? I mean, that's, that's the other question. Is is it a real thing? But before we get into that, I think I'm just, do you have any points you want to start with? No, no, go ahead. This is, I think the the thing I always think of when this becomes a top concern and just the fact that it's a top three concern. Um, you're just guessing that, right? Like (laughs) I'm just going to start statistics. (laughs) But the fact that this is a top three, I would really say it's like, okay, like lack of education, you know, just like poor education, taking away from the kids that are in the public school system, because Mm -hmm. if you're pulling your kids out, then you aren't Mm -hmm. helping that community stay healthy. And I would say socialization. I don't know what other concerns I've heard actually. Okay. Maybe like, I'm worried I'm going to be impatient or mad at my kids if they're home with me all day or something like that. Yeah. But I'd say that's a fourth. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I, I think that maybe we could ask a different, whenever people ask that, I always wonder your kid, you know, being awkward or being socially unadjusted or just not being cool, like where that shows up on your priority list for your child's development. I think that's a, it's a valid question to ask yourself. And, and I guess I'm asking people that, now, like where, where does that show up on your priority list? And not, I mean, this is going to sound like all, you know, holy am I, but when I think of what I want for my kids, it's like, okay, well, first and foremost is Christian. And you're like, well, that's obvious, but then I want it to go beyond a saving faith. And I want the characteristics in their life to be, uh, I guess, really informed by Christ to truly be Christian, to be Christ-like, to be a follower of Christ to be indwelt by the Holy Spirit and therefore have the fruits of the Spirit evident in their life. You know, love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness. Uh, I, I want I want them to be people of Christ-like character and to have their faith be what, I guess, in, informs how they behave, how they interact with one another. And, and I know that that sounds like a very obvious thing, but I, I do think when you start by like, what do we want most for our kids? For me anyways, whatever things that you might attribute to, um, you know, awkward homeschool kids to me, they're, they're low on the, they're low on the priority list. Mm. When I think of like, okay, are they, I just wrote down some words like, are they cool? Are they witty? Are they clever? Are they, you know, suave? It's like, are your sons suave? Are they popular amongst their peers? Are they accepted? I'm are not they saying, worldly wise? Like, yeah, they worldly know what's wise. going on or are there references and they're just like staring you in the face? Like I've, no clue what you're talking about right yeah, now. Which is in, in, indicative of my whole life. Yeah. My, my childhood, Mine my high school too. years. Is, Actually, uh, still today. Yeah, still to this day. <laughs> it's like things are said and it, not knowing what the double entendre is to various uh, words or sayings um, and no, not knowing what various innuendos mean. Like that, again, I we were homeschooled. I played high school basketball. And it's like on a regular basis, I would be in the locker room and, you know, the guys would be like, oh, do you even know what that means, Elisha? And I'd be like, oh, no, I don't know. You know, like, oh, and I, I just, I don't know. That just was 
normal. That was par for the course. Yeah, like, I would I, say that's exactly the same experience I had growing up in a public school. Except for the girls were really cool about it. And they thought it was awesome that my sisters and I had no clue what they were talking about. They thought it was sweet. And so they all took it upon themselves to protect the Johnson girls. Yes. And I thought that was cute that instead of thinking, oh, well, we need to expose them to everything that we know, mm. it was like, oh, they're really innocent or, you know, ignorant and we need to protect that. Yeah. And so it was really sweet. Yeah. And I don't, I don't ever feel like I was bullied or anything like that because of my naivety. Um, but the point in saying that is that like, that's how I continue to feel oftentimes to this day, not Obviously, it's not like every day I'm in that environment where it's like, oh, what are they talking about or what does that mean? Uh, but there's, I'd say there's still, as like a full grown man, you hear, especially young kids, you hear them talking about stuff and you're like, what, is that what I think it means? You know, like, are they talking about what I think they're talking about? Well, I feel and, like stuff like that changes with every generation too. Yeah. Yeah, no doubt. Like what certain words mean or references mm -hmm. or things like that. Yeah. And so I guess I'm, I'm trying to get inside people's head and figure out what what the concern is like what what's the concern because if it is being out of the loop on slang or on you know maybe, maybe even inappropriate jokes or not knowing not being up to date on cultural references that's just not that big a concern for me because that's been my that's been my entire life and sure i've been kind of maybe maybe kind of embarrassed a handful of times but I wouldn't even say like it's been – I've never lost sleep over it. I've never like said something and, you know, somebody's pulled me aside and they've been like, you know what that actually means. and Because that's that's happened to me numerous times where it's like you've you're, you're bro. you me in marriage too. Yeah, you're like, you know what that actually means. <laughs> like you know what you're saying, Katie. Yeah, and, and they've told me – I've been pulled aside and, and sold that to. I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> I go on with my life. Like it just doesn't – Maybe it should bug me that that happens or that has happened many times in my life, um, but it doesn't. And so I'm curious, Katie, what do you think it is people are are concerned of or concerned about when they want their kids to be not awkward or not, you know, socially inept or what, what do you think it is? Yeah, you know, I think it's interesting because I'm reading Elon Musk's biography right now. Mm -hmm. You read it first. Phenomenal biography. Uh, but... He is a really socially awkward guy in terms of maybe what the world would call popular. Like he wasn't naturally a popular type of guy. And yet he gets a ton of stuff done and is a top achiever and all these things. A little crazy. Yeah, definitely. But he's, he's a, a world crazy, changer. But he's a world changer. And I think at the end of the day, we want to raise world changers. And I think parents are may be concerned that their children not having the social know-how that other kids have might inhibit them from being world changers. Mm -hmm. It might inhibit them in a setting where they're trying to, you know, impress a girl and it's just like awkward for them mm -hmm. or um, something like that. You know what I'm saying? Where they aren't able to have the conversations that they need to have to get their point across in the way that they need to, that they make other people uncomfortable. I think that on a very base level that none of us would probably admit to, our children are all extensions of us. And when our children present poorly or embarrass themselves, it's a reflection on us. Mm. And so we want children that aren't going to embarrass us and are going to present well and make us look good. And I think that at the core of it, that's we're looking out for ourselves more than we're looking out for our children hmm. because there are very awkward, uncool people in this world that are phenomenal parents that love the Lord, that are phenomenal spouses that, um, yeah, will never hit on the popular list, hmm. but are being so faithful to everything that the Lord has called them to. Hmm. And I think it's interesting though, that we're the ones having this conversation because just two nights ago, Elisha, um, you took all our kids aside and we're having them. No, no, no. Uh, you need to look me in the eye when you ask a question, you know, at dinner this week, you were having the kids take turns and everyone had to ask a question to mm -hmm. someone else at the dinner table to, you know, become better conversationalists or tonight 
we had, um, you had them all stand up and they took turns in our evening routine, keeping their hands at their side, not putting their hands in their mouth, pulling up their clothes, looking all awkward and introducing themselves and singing a song. And so this is something that we prioritize pretty heavily actually in our family is the training and the passing on of social cues and emotional intelligence and communication, being a good conversationalist and making someone else feel at ease when they're talking to you. So we're taking proactive steps in this way, but I wouldn't say that it's something that at the end of the day, if our decision to homeschool our children meant that our children were going to be socially awkward, we would still make that decision. And I think that is to your point. Um, but that, but we just don't think that it has to be that way. Yeah, I agree. You, like you said, I, I talked about how it's not high on the priority list for it for us, but it still shows up. Yeah, as far as yeah. equipping our kids to interact in a social manner and we, in a public we, environment. We don't want our children to look back at us when they're, you know, 25 years old or 30 years old and be like, okay, I'm going to apply for job interviews. And like, I, I get the interview and then I can't <laughs> make it through that. Or like, you know, why wasn't I prepared socially? Why do yeah. I, why am I really shy and nervous in these different settings? Why am I just so awkward, you know, because these are all things that can be trained. Yes. And in most children, I feel like some children realize at a very early age, oh, I'm noticing, like, I feel like you were more like this, Elisha. We looked around, I don't know, I'm going to speak for you and then you can tell me if I'm right or not. We looked around and saw the people that were well received and started as a child being like, I want to be received like that how do, and you started picking up cues from them. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I think, I think there's a few things I want to comment on one, even just before I forget backing up to Elon Musk. I I do think oftentimes parents will take people like Elon Musk, Mark Zuckerberg, you know, Jeff Bezos and whatever. You could probably keep naming a bunch of like tech billionaires that are socially awkward. And they almost use that as a comfort to not equip their kids with good social skills. Yes. And I don't want to do that. That's not what we're saying. We don't no. look to people like Elon Musk as role models for our for our children. For anything. Yeah, for anything. It's like, no, that's there's a there's a ton to learn from his biography and from his life, but we're not like, see, like this we want our kids to be like this. There are some things that you can take away and be like, oh, okay, you have to think differently. You have to be okay being considered crazy if you're gonna be somebody that's you know, it, promoting the gospel that's, you know, growing, hopefully raising a, a large family. Um, that, that is going to be weird. You're going to be, uh, you're, you are going to be an outsider in my mind. If you live in an unchristian culture, which our, which our culture is, is unchristian, you know, it's a very unchristian culture We're Christians, it's like, okay, so more times than not, we are going to be the weird ones. And I think it's good to accept that early on and then to see it how it's played out in different people's lives and to draw so, again not yeah. draw principles from it but not. i took a lot of comfort in that verse in first peter i think it's in first peter too where it says we are a chosen nation a holy no a chosen a royal people priest. a royal priesthood a holy nation a peculiar people mm-hmm. and that has been called forth to proclaim christ yes. ultimately and so that we are called to be a peculiar people no. so that doesn't mean we need to make ourselves more peculiar yeah. than we need to be <laughs> we want to be peculiar for the right reasons but we are outsiders yeah um and so yeah, yeah so i just wanted to mention that in regards to elon musk i don't I, yeah, yeah 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 well that is the flip side of this conversation is not valuing social skills and mm-hmm. so not equipping our children which it is a having social skills is something that makes you a lot more effective. Yeah. And, and I think a lot of the way that we're teaching social skills, I guess, to our children really is more of a character than it is even a skill or a tactic, because I do think at the heart of being socially skilled, there needs to be it being about other people and not about yourself. Meaning, Oh, I want to serve other people. I want to be a blessing. I want to make, like you said, I want to make them feel feel comfortable. I don't want them to feel, you know, like they're being attacked. I don't want them to feel like they're being judged unnecessarily. And that that's what we were taught as kids. And again, we were, you know, 
a big, a large homeschool. We, we stuck out like a sore thumb everywhere we went. You know, we had matching denim clothes and, and my sisters wore the denim skirts. We wore, we tucked our, our, our shirts in and we had, there was 10 of us. We clearly were the homeschool family showing up to places. But what my dad taught was like, hey, it's actually not about you when you go into this room, when you go to this event, when you go to the church, when you go to whatever whatever gathering, the sporting event, uh, make it about other people. Look them in the eye, ask them how they're doing, uh, you know, to ask them about their life and talk to them about their day. And so it wasn't taught us from a standpoint of like, here's how you really impress people. Like you want to you be winsome. You want to, you know, be the guy that stands out in an interview. Th- these are the tactics. This is the this is the Dale Carnegie way. Uh, it was, hey, here's how you make people feel like you care about them, and I I want that to be at the heart of why we're doing this for our children because I do think that should be at the heart of the Christian pursuit of yeah so being social with people is like hey are you being ki- kind are you reaching out to them are you starting a conversation are you looking them in the eye are you showing them that you actually care about their answer uh versus there's a ton of like i do air quotes cool kids maybe they were cool in high school i don't know when, when they were cool and it truly is all about themselves and there's poor character behind all of it so i'd way rather have that others focused character not in their opinions the only thing that matters but and i want to serve them i want to let them know that i care about them does that make sense yeah i love that i think that's a huge distinction when you consider social skills and social graces it's not something where we just need our kids to be around other kids to learn how to pick up you know the worldly wise way to interact it's how do we do this in a character filled way? Social skills can be a character flaw or a character virtue. And it doesn't mean that, you know, some people aren't trying really hard and still have quirks in their social interactions, even though the character is there, Mm -hmm. they might still make people feel uncomfortable just by the way they're presenting. And that's totally fine too. Yeah. That's (laughs) what I don't want to control that. Like I will teach, I will, point it out to my kids or when they're young adults be like hey you know that was and this is another thing too being conscientious of the setting that's just a good it's going back to the heart of it it's like i I don't want the motivation to be like hey do you want to know how to really win the room again that's that's a byproduct maybe sometimes i mean i feel like we both started getting into that when we were older like in high school yeah and i think a lot of it dale carnegie when friends and influence people like i don't think that's a bad thing to pursue either no but i do think that like prior to that the 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 foundation was more of a giving perspective that's at least how it was taught to us Yes, it was too um and then what's interesting is you know even i look at my siblings your siblings all of them have been taught um like kind you know uh good manners i should say Mm -hmm. like others focused manners but not all of them have like had this attitude of, I want to go in and win a room, no. you know, but they all have good manners. Like, yes. I, cause I do think there are probably going to be some uh, dispositions that our kids have where they, they want to be that more, you know, front stage personality that, that has a story to tell that, you know, wants to share their opinion on things. And obviously that needs to be tempered and you need to, you know, train, train that propensity to be considerate. Um, but then others are going to be like, oh, I'd rather not talk to anybody. And we're like, okay, well I, I understand that's what you'd rather do but you need to go introduce yourself you need to ask these people questions yeah i remember it really surprising me when i was doing a q a with my mom a while ago and she mentioned that being shy was a form of selfishness and it was just this aha moment for me because i feel like shyness is a character flaw that we as parents often defend and our children hide behind us with this um under this blanket of shyness and that was something that wasn't allowed in our home. And it wasn't until my mom put words to it that I understood the philosophy behind why that wasn't allowed. Because when you're being shy, you're you're just thinking of yourself. You're thinking, I'm uncomfortable in this situation. And you aren't thinking about how you're making the other people feel. And so we were never given the excuse of, oh, well, she's just shy. If If we acted that way in a situation where we wouldn't look someone in the eye or we wouldn't introduce themselves when we were kind of prompted or encouraged to, then we went home and we drilled it and we were expected to do better the next time. And this wasn't to make my parents look good. And we got that. It was to engage the other person and make the other person feel comfortable because we've all been around a shy person that doesn't get out of their comfort zone. And it's a very awkward 
position to be in. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard to, um, so acting, I guess, in spite of that feeling of timidity Mm -hmm. is something that we want to encourage our children in when it comes to social skills. You might be scared, you might be, yeah, really nervous, but we can act in spite of that and still put other people at ease, even if we aren't feeling at ease in the situation ourselves. Yeah, that's something that, again, uh, I want to, I think it's worth training and kind of distinguishing here between maybe, um, like the heart of the issue or like the character behind, a, a practice and then the tactics of, of that. Cause I, I do think even when I think of, okay, how are we making our kids, you know, not weird or not socially awkward. I really hope that we emphasize more than what we don't want them to be. What we, and we emphasize what we do want them to be. It's like, okay, are you guys, you know, are you thoughtful? Are you sensitive to the situation? You know, are you good listeners? Are you, uh, whatever, you know, are you, um, yeah, like confident? Good, are you, are you good conversationalists? Do you just answer with one word answers or do you ask questions back and do you show an interest in the other person's life mm-hmm. instead of just expecting them to be enthralled with your one word answers? Yeah. Uh, I even think of things like, do you know when it's time to leave someone's home? Exactly. Are yeah. you going to overstay your welcome? Uh, we've all experienced those people that just don't know when it's time to leave, when it's time to put the kids to bed, or maybe they're staying, they came for a day or two to stay and now they're staying for a week. Yeah. And <laughs> they just don't know. I am serious. Yeah. Like we've all experienced this yeah. or, or quite a few of us have. And we don't want to be in that position because it's easy to sometimes do. It's easy to think, oh, I'm loving being with these people so much. Surely they're loving being with me. Mm-hmm. And I remember my mom, we always left earlier than I wanted to as a kid. And I remember by both my parents saying, you want to leave having them want you to come back. Yeah. So leave before they're ready because people would beg us to stay. And that was when, my, you know, it was a good time to go. Yeah. <laughs> not when they're like, you know, checking the clock. Yeah. And so I, that's something that's really stuck with me. And I'm not saying that I've never overstayed my welcome. I mean, I've had some gracious hosts <laughs> we might have, but, but like, that's another example where it's like, we want our children to be in tune to, you know, when they go somewhere, yeah. when's it time to go? Yeah. Just to know that that's a thing. Like, yeah. like here's the thing. Overstaying your welcome is a real thing. Yeah. And so you need to be aware of where that line's at and hopefully bug out before it before comes. Before you hit the line. Yeah, exactly. I also do think regarding social skills in our children, public school versus homeschool, private school, etc. cetera, uh, I think it really comes down to the parents and, and yeah. what are they doing to equip their, their children and what are they doing to... I guess, show their children the value in social graces. And I do think, you know, maybe you think of scenarios where you're like, well, man, I want my kids to be able to know the difference of when they're going to a wedding and versus when they're going to a funeral. Like, are they off in the corner at the memorial service goofing off with their friends and laughing and everybody can hear them? Because that happens. Like, we've yes. all been at memorial services. And, and I mean, again, it's like that happens with public school kids and homeschool kids. Like yeah, it happens just with a, a kid thing. I think yeah. like the whole foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. That yeah. proverb, it's just across the board. Yeah. Yeah. I think it is. And it comes down to the parent being like, Hey, that giving them that again, I go back to my parents, like just the pep talk every time we were pulling into an event, mm-hmm. like if it were a memorial service, if it were a wedding, if it, if it were church, if it was a concert that we are performing, or if it was a concert, somebody else was performing like you go you, you think of that like you're going to somebody else's performance like what is this make it about them like make them feel awesome for their performance and my dad being like hey you guys know this isn't our show like this isn't our thing this is about so and so make sure you make them feel awesome for their performance um or if you're going to a sporting event for a particular person just like really back that person up this is we're here to support them you know don't tease them for the bad plays they made or um, tell how good you were at your sporting event <laughs> yeah stuff like that happens it all does, the time it it's does. nuts where like somebody comes to your event and they tell you how much better their event was you know than your event and you're like okay like <laughs> like that is a thing that happens and again with public schoolers and homeschoolers I feel like, you know, it, it comes down to the parents. Really school, the schooling matter, the schooling style is literally irrelevant. Mm. I don't, I can't say this enough. I think that homeschoolers are singled out more because when you notice an awkward homeschooler, there's a name for it. We don't really go around when we see the oodles of dozen 
other schoolers and say, oh, that's an awkward public schooler. <laughs> like, we just kind of assume that that's the lay of the land. There's the popular kids in school. There's yep. the unpopular kids in school. There's like the nerds, the jocks, and then the kids you're like, what are you doing? And and I don't think we realize the percentages, like how heavily that is, mm -hmm. just just in children all around. And like you said, I think it depends more on the parent and what the parents are teaching than what the peers are teaching. Because yeah. I would say out of all the social skills that our children pick up, the ones that we untrain are the ones that were taught by their peers. And it's yes. not saying <laughs> that we don't want our kids to uh, know how to interact with other kids. You know, we do go to parks and... I don't know where our kids got this because they're like way more bold than I was as a child. Maybe they got it from you, but they just like go up to other kids. Every single time we go to a park, ask them to play a game. Mm. Often kids will reject them the first time. So they just start playing by themselves and then they come on over and warm up and start wanting to play with our kids. And then all the kids are playing at the park mm -hmm. and I'm just like, wow, that's so cool. But I think I, I think that our children are able to venture out from a place of confidence like mm. they are so confident in who they are and who we've uh who we tell them they are in christ and as our children that i think that they're able to withstand sometimes the meanness of other little kids or just the rejection of other little kids or kids that don't know how to communicate in a graceful way i mean i see our kids do that too and it's no like doubt. hey you gotta i know what you're trying i know what you mean here but that's not what's getting communicated yeah and so I, it really makes me happy to see them be able to take that stuff um, and and interact with, with their peers. But but far and away, the stuff we deal with at home is, is untraining. Like, oh, that's the annoying trait you picked up from so-and-so, and that's the annoying trait you picked up from so-and-so, and you probably passed on your annoying trait to someone else. Yeah. <laughs> and it's like, it is not, until you're like way further up the food chain, do can peers, I don't I don't know, maybe in high school, you can start to learn from your peers in a helpful way. But like middle school and under, I don't know if I've seen any helpful behaviors being passed on. Yeah, well, that was something else that I was going to actually mention is kind of the timeline goal for when your kids are. Okay, so it's, uh, uh, acknowledging that like, okay, being cool or being winsome or being the the guy is far down the priority list when it mm -hmm. comes to what we want for our children. We want character. We want their faith to be at the forefront. And like like you mentioned so well, Katie, a bit ago, like there are quirky, awkward people that are phenomenal spouses, phenomenal parents, great brothers and sisters in the faith. And it's like, I, I like those. Those are my people. It's like, I like yes. those people. Like that's that's what I want. I don't want my kid to be quirky and awkward, but I want those other things far more than them being cool. Does that make sense? Yeah, I like, would be praising the Lord if that was our children. Yeah, I'm like, these guys Essentially, are... Essentially, it's yeah. just like... And if my children married people like that, you know, yes. where it's like their character, it's like they're a faithful spouse, they're an intentional parent, they are solid in their faith, um, and it's like, oh, they're a little quirky socially, or they don't get some social cues, or they're not up to date on lingo or whatever, it's yeah. like, well, okay, <laughs> like, you Who know... Who cares? And uh, so, but, but acknowledging like, okay, well, if you want your kid to be effective, you know, cause that is something that I want for my children. You mentioned the job interview scenario where you, we talk about going into a room and be able to make other people feel comfortable. Um, or I even think of just like you talk about a job interview, you think about getting a referral, like you think of, okay, if my kid's 24 and he's applying for a position or he wants an internship somewhere, what the people around the adults around him, can he ask them for a referral letter? Can be like, Hey, can you write a letter? And what do they think about that? Mm -hmm. That, that young man or that young woman? So I do care about that, even though it's down on the priority list, but I don't care about it for when they're 15 mm -hmm. as much. I don't care about it for when they're 17 mm -hmm. as much. I'm thinking a little bit further down the road to, to when it's like they are a married, like father, husband, provider. They, they need to be a person of influence they, or I want them to be a person of influence within their community. It's not that I don't want my 15 year old to be a positive influence around the people that he's around. It's just that like being cool at that stage isn't like, I'm not, that's not on my, my parenting goals. It's not like in the trajectory. Well, it's also like a, this is statistical and I'm not sure quite what it is, but the kids that are 
super cool at 15, it has no basis on whether they are going to still be someone that people are looking up to when they're 20 and 30 and 40 and 50. Yeah, yeah. It just, there's no correlation between a cool with it popular kid at, at those ages. And I mean, definitely not when they're six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12, like all the way up. If our kids are the weird ones, we're so cool with that. We're playing this long game. Mm -hmm. And yeah, what we want is adults that are going to raise healthy families. Yeah, exactly. And they glorify and, the Lord. Yes. And, and be Im impactful. Impact their communities. In their communities. And, uh, be influential within their spheres. Um, we want them to be able to communicate so that they're able to communicate. We want them to be critical thinkers and be able to communicate that to other people. And so that spreads. So by all means, these are, I, I know we're like talking out of both sides of our mouth here, but hopefully you guys are kind of untangling this little web and getting the idea of, of what are, what we're trying to come across. Yeah. Again, just to reiterate, like the, at the, you know, the top of the pyramid being like, I, I want them to be pe or maybe it's the bottom, the foundation, forget the pyramid. Let's not use that <laughs> shape. People get uncomfortable with pyramids anyways. Pyramid so, <laughs> um, uh, <laughs> like as far as the priority goes, it's like their character, their faith, you know, like virtue, virtues, godly, godly virtues. And we all know people where they might not be the coolest person. They might not be the most popular person, but you meet them. You're like, I've got so much respect for them because of yeah. their character, because of the virtues that according to God's value system are far greater than, you know, popular, popular virtues here in this world. Uh, and you're like, man, that's I admire that. And, and so I want to emphasize those first and foremost, going back again, though, we talked about, it comes down to the parents, like are the parents equipping their kids? I don't think that just automatically happens because I think I, I would have used to thought that, oh, if your parents are socially comfortable and equipped, then the kids are going to be that way. You and I have both seen time and time again where that's not the case. Well, sometimes the parents cover for the kids. Like the kids can ride on the coattails of the parents because the parents are so gregarious mm. and good socially that people just love the parents so much the kids get grandfathered in. Mm. And then once the kids are on their own, it's like, who is this oddball? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I'm serious. Like, yeah. So I do happens. think whether or not you're, you're more of an introvert, shy adult, it's incumbent upon you to train your children in social skills. And likewise, if you are gregarious and you are winsome and you are outspoken and extroverted, it's incumbent upon you to teach your children how to be gracious in social situations because we've talked about this before, both public school, homeschooled. We've seen, we've like met parents where you're like, wow, you are so with it. And then you like, you know, meet the kids down the road or their high school or their young adults. And you're like something like didn't get passed on here, you know, a value system or the skill set or the tactics. And so it doesn't just happen because you're comfortable as an adult. In social yeah. Settings. And I mean, I'm expecting tweaks to be, be made to our children's social etiquette all throughout their time with us here in our home. I think when I was in high school and I have seven sisters and we started becoming very loud. And I think that's a natural trait of young girls when they're socially hyper, they start getting loud. And there's a verse in the King James Bible called odious. And my parents were... were the verse is called odious. <laughs> the verse is called odious. <laughs> It sounds like an epic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, there's a term, a word called odious for just loud and obnoxious. And that's something that my parents would constantly be reminding us of. I feel like girls, you're really presenting odiously. And we would tell each other that too, to keep each other in check. And people would laugh when we use that term, but it just, we wanted to have, my parents wanted us to have these gentle and quiet spirits and regardless of how our relationships were with the Lord and who we were in our homes and what our character was, we were presenting like these obnoxious females and that yeah. wasn't what, um, that isn't how we should be presenting as Christians. And so, you know, I just think all throughout high school, there's going to be these, these things where we're encouraging our children character wise when it comes to social etiquette, uh, when it comes to social etiquette with engaging others and being others focused. And then also just, you know, that whole concept, which is kind of the icing on the social cake, which is how to win friends and influence people. If our kids never get to that level, that's okay. Yeah. But 
I do not think it's bad to aspire to that either. Right. Because winning friends and influencing people, I think is a fantastic thing for a Christian to do. There's a lot of verses in Proverbs about men standing before kings. Mm -hmm. And when you're standing before kings, um, if you, it's a good idea to be able to know how to communicate with them. Yeah. And just one final thing I'll share, and this is something that I want to keep in mind for you and I, uh, my parents were really intentional from, I mean, a pretty early, cause I think my, my, my parents, they weren't homeschooled. They were public schooled. And when they decided to take the countercultural route of homeschooling, which was even, I mean, that was really countercultural, you know, what, 35 yeah, years ago, ago when they started doing that, um, they, I think, you know, felt obligated and inclined to make sure that they put us around people that they felt like were successful, capable adults, not necessarily peers, Right. But they, and I think of the people, you know, as my being like eight years old and my parents being like, okay, we want you guys to be around, uh, Travis and Jenny Matthews. It's like, they are young, successful. It's a young, successful married couple. We had them over for dinner. Like Bryce and Liddy would hang out with Jenny. The boys and I would, would hang out Joey and I would hang out with Travis. And then I think of Wade and Kelly Samuelson. And again, I'm like nine years old. So my older siblings are 11, you know, 13, 15, J.R. McGee, Anita McGee. Um, and then later on, even your family, like my dad being grateful that, you know, me as like a 12 or 13 or 14 year old was able to be around your uncle Dwight, you know, he was such a gregarious, is such a winsome, gregarious, gregarious guy. Um, you know, you put that guy in any setting and he makes everybody feel like a million bucks. Yeah, like everyone he just loves uncle Dwight. Yeah. And likewise with your, with your grandparents or, you know, my, my parents being so grateful when we could be around Brunel and Paula, because it's the same thing. They are very others focused in their social etiquette and that's something that my parents really wanted us to witness it's like you know how Burnell takes such interest in your life it's like you are one of hundreds of thousands of people that they know and yet they sit down and they ask you about what you're going through in school what you're, and then how they you remember and ask you yeah. about it the next time yeah they see you eight months later and they ask you how that's going you know and you're like wow that's really cool and my my dad and mom would point out those character qualities and those virtues in people and and tell us to practice that. They didn't see like, oh, that's just, they're naturally that way. And you know, they didn't say, you know, Burnell and Paula or Dwight, they're not, they're not just naturally that way. Like th that's an actual character quality mm -hmm. that they have, that they put others first. Um, and so I think my parents were very proactive in doing that because they knew they were going to have blind spots. And it's so funny just us sitting us here. It's like sitting here, like you are going to have your um, priorities as we're going to overlook things. Yeah. And we're going to be like, well, this matters, but that doesn't really matter. And then in the big picture that actually probably did matter a little bit, you know, and what you think <laughs> is so more. important actually isn't that important. And so I think my parents knew that about themselves. And, and so they, they wanted us to be around other young adults and adults that had different value systems. Uh, and not like from a moral or faith standpoint, but when it came to like what was culturally cool or what was, successful different skill sets socially i should yeah, say get a little bigger picture than yes. maybe you're like really local local crowd yes. you know your small circle of friends that you run with and I, I do think of that when we were in high school my parents were very um, we went to a lot of social things mm -hmm. and i do think they didn't want to like raise us in a little mound of earth and just keep us there and unleash us to the world to have our bubbles all burst yeah. all at like once. the underminer yeah, yeah that's the what it sounded underminer like. <laughs> so, uh, no, that wasn't the goal. Mm. They were very proactive in seeking out social circles that they thought would be helpful for our development, yeah. helpful for finding future spouses, stuff like that. Um, you know, you want your kids to, to be able to interact with the world for sure. But if our, you know, going back to the beginning where we started this conversation, if, you know, 20 years from now, people look at our kids and go, wow, we can tell the Boberg kids were homeschooled. They are homeschooled kids. And, and the other things that we care about are, are, are in line. Then I just say, you know, praise the Lord. Yeah. I, <laughs> what, whenever somebody's tried to explain like a attribute of a nerdy homeschool kid, I'm like, that sounds like the type of person I'd want to hang out. I'm like, I like, yeah. sounds like my type of guy, you know? Cause well, I guess I'm that guy. Like that's definitely like, we know. have no, we don't have a goal for our kids to not be homeschooly no. or for it to not be obvious. They were homeschooled. No, uh, that is not the goal. Yeah. At all. Yeah. And it's not that we, cause we think that's so awesome. It's just that what we, the things we actually want for our kids are kind of beyond that. It's like, yes. yeah, that doesn't really show up for actually what we want our kids 
to yeah, be about. Yeah, well, I mean, I'm sure if you send your kids to public school, it's not like your goal for your kids is for people to be like, oh, wow. You were public schooled. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> or like, oh, I can tell. You, you know yeah. what I'm saying? It's like, we just don't want the schooling to really be the the main thing people think of when they think of our kids. But yes. if they get labeled with like, oh, you're, you, you, they get this socially awkward label, then we hope it's just for the right reasons. Right. That they're socially awkward or seen as uncool. Yeah. And, um, yeah. No doubt. Cool. I don't think I have anything else to say about the <laughs> subject. <laughs> I don't know if you do. No, uh, it was a fun discussion, Elisha. Good. Cool. Thank well, you for, guys for being here for yeah. it. If you enjoyed this podcast, please, please share it with somebody that you think might enjoy it. Talk to you soon. Bye.